to Bitcoin Podcast. Man, I like that intro. That's so good. I'm gonna yeah, it's gonna be. Class. I'm gonna miss that a lot. Yep. Hey, everybody! Welcome to uh, the Bitcoin Podcast. This is episode one of the last three ninety eight. Three ninety eight. Wow. Um. Yeah, it's hard to believe. We got two more episodes. Two more episodes, Dose. and then the Dose Bitcoin Podcast. Off. Gets a closed book and goes on the shelf for you guys to listen to at infinity on the bitcoinpodcast.com. And then tell all your friends about all the cool things that we've said over the years uh, that ended up being almost 100% right. Um, but we're not going to toot our own horn. But if you subscribe to our class, we could show you how to be right too, just for a small fee of $500 a month. And we'll show you how to be right. No, I'm kidding. That's I'm not a trader. I don't do those things. Um. Anyways, I'm the host of Talks First. D. I talk second usually, Dr. Corey Petty. And I'm third, Jesse Broke. And uh, today, what we're going to talk about is, uh, yeah, something that I I mentioned just out of, you know, just fell out of my mouth right prior to recording, and I was like, I said that I'm scared to do anything in crypto right now, new because. If I approve something with my wallet, I'm going to get drained. And then Corey said, ha, we should talk about that. And I said, yeah, we should. We should talk about that because it's it's hard, man. You got to trust stuff to use it. But if I knew if I, every time I swung a hammer, that head might fly off and hit a kid 10 feet away, then I'm not using that hammer. Anymore. Or no, it's not even that. It's like watching a bunch of people try and hammer stuff and then see them hit kids with hammers. Yeah. It's, it's You're crazy. like, but I've been, I thought I've been using a hammer for a long time. It's hard out here <laughs> in the streets. And I think you had a tweet, Corey, similar, where you said, I'm even scared to look at my email because I just feel like anything. Oh, yeah. But that's not crypto. I mean, I'm, I'd say my position in crypto has gotten me the requisite amount of attention that I get targeted for scams a lot. And I'm also in like a bunch of different places that have had like information leaks that give people targets to spam for like phishing attempts and things like that. And Mm -hmm. so like every, I would quote unquote normie channel for communication and getting, getting access to me. So email, text messages, phone calls, those like those types of things are literally just 95% spam and trying to get me to click on something. And so like, I, if you want to contact me and you use those methods, I'm not going to answer you because it's, it's drowned in spam. Kind of reminds me of when you, when you asked me if I called you and I told you, uh, no, I don't call people like ever, never. Yeah. You told (laughs) me that too. And I was like, what's your phone number? And you were like, don't That's worry about it. Thing for me. It's like, <laughs> I was like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, I have a phone number, but I don't use it. Like, I don't, I don't really call or text message. We're signing up for things, apparently. That's it. Hmm. It's just like some, just like lately when I, I, I call it logging in, when I connect the me to crypto, when I'm trying to figure out what's going on, do some reading or, or experimentation. It's like all I hear is that um, Mad World song from the Donnie Darko soundtrack. All all over over New York, <laughs> New <laughs> this, yes, every time I'm like, do I click here? Because I feel like I'll be listening to Mad World in like a week if I click here. Or like I see all these things and it's like, claim, claim your airdrop. And I'm like, hmm, should I? I don't think. Free mint, NFT here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like now my at least maybe it's an accomplishment, maybe it's not, but now my Twitter DMs are done for. Every day it's like fifteen of, really? hey, here's here's a seed, here's a private seed phrase. Enter it in. Twitter DMs. Yeah, like they got. My I don't Twitter get them there. DMs. I get my them Twitter DMs Twitter. are like clean. Maybe you have uh, surprise security point. enabled, like follow follow back messaging. Do you have oh, that? In I don't follow anyone unless that, I know them personally. That could be it. I don't have to. You have to be following me to DM me. So it's just constant. Like, yeah. Here's here's we your seed phrase. We need, we need the, yeah, someone has to be. We have to be mutual follows in order for people to DM me. Ah, so I'll set that up. Then that's on me. But I don't know. It's, it's, 
Same thing for Discord, by the way, which has saved mm-hmm. my Discord life. Yep. yep. And this is what, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, we were using it in a previous recording that we've done. And it's like, it's like standards, right? Like if, if something can prove that it's been built with a certain standard, then we all can rest easy, right? Like, uh, yeah, but at the same time, it, you, having standards is wonderful, right? It gives you a level of confidence that there's a, a amount of coordination on how something should work. And because everyone agrees upon the methods of these things, they can do research to verify how secure it is and the proper ways of implementing it. So that builds you some like specification for a standard. This is how you're supposed to do this thing in order to provide features like X, Y, and Z. But when you make an implementation of that standard, when someone tries to apply it to an application or program or platform or whatever, then uh, you can have incorrect implementations or buggy implementations of a given standard or just even used incorrectly that cause bugs. This is like the, the whole Solana situation is an example of this. Like it's basically someone who did cross server communication to handle private keys in the dumbest way possible, but everything else was, as far as I know, done reasonably well, but they did this one thing incredibly ignorantly and 8,000 plus wallets are now compromised on Solana, which is something like, I think $7 million right now. Mm. So like standards are great, but yes. application of standards is also equally as important if you're not paying attention. That's a good point. It's a good, it's a good subtlety to add to the equation of non-sensory that's going on in crypto. I almost curse right there. That one's for you. Uh, whoever asked me not to curse. So These are the, your mom, yeah. ergo. Yeah, it was my mom, it was my dad, it was Wayne, it was pretty much everyone who listens. Everyone you know has asked you to stop like, cursing. You don't curse that much in real life. And I was like, it's not real life. <laughs> it's a podcast, baby. No, I'm playing. We all see how uh, Senior Alex Jones is trying to play the that's not me when I'm talking card right now. Oof. That's yeah. probably the like a, a silver lining of the current state of the affairs in the world right now is, is watching Alex Jones just like die in a fire. Oof, it's so sad. What's going on? I, I don't know. He's being oh, like yeah. put on the stand and he's burying himself. And then his, and like, and then his lawyer just released all of his private emails on accident and like the financial statements of Infowars on accident to the defendant. And now they oh, have wow. access to all those things, and he's like, and this guy's like, "Oh, whoops, shouldn't have done that." What was the so, what was the court case? What's going on? I, I don't know. I like Sandy Hook was an issue. I, I don't know what it is. It's probably it's, January six. It's very related crazy. stuff, but in the process of that, they've just like dismantled all of the dumb bullshit he's said over the years. So, I, I kind of yeah. pinned what's happening recently because I noticed it subtly at the grocery store. Remember how when we were all younger and you're in the line at the grocery store and you see the tabloids and they're like, alien marries woman in the farm. And you're like, what? That's stupid looking. And it had like a like a guy in an alien suit and he was hugging a woman. And then, I don't know, maybe this is just me, a very specific scenario. And I looked at my mom and I was like, mom, check it out. That, that alien married a woman. She's like, no, that's silly. Those are just the tabloids. They're written to get attention. And, and I was like, oh, okay, so that's the dumb section of, you know, only dumb people buy those things. And so I think the tabloids have found a way in the mass of the internet to exist without existing. And just everything is tabloids. And people figured out, and Alex Jones is one of them. He's just a tabloid. That's all he is, is he just says a bunch of fake stuff. Jesse. And he get paid. At one point, he, he was making paid. over $800,000 a day. Just saying a bunch of fake. He was saying stuff like there's frog people. In, that are wearing human suits in Congress. But the problem was he, he was right about a few things over the course of the decades he's been doing Infowars. So yeah. like, that's all people point to. Yeah, so- I'm gonna put some headphones on. I think I'm getting echo. 
you are. But so that was that's basically Alex Jones. I don't know why we're talking about Alex Jones and crypto podcast, but that that is what it was, and he's going down for it now. Like hmm. you said those things, and they're right there, and you lied and you hurt people. So, anyways, back to crypto. So standards aren't going to save us. There's lots of standards, but people, it's how they implement the standards that don't necessarily save us. And get us more to a point where tri- crypto is more trustworthy. But I also want to push back. I want to push back specifically on the members of our audience that like feel that this stuff has no value. I have to push back on that. And the reason I push back on that is today I was in the middle of a conversation with someone. I just glanced at MSNBC. And instead of there being stocks on the bottom ticker, it was all crypto tokens. It was like 20 crypto tokens in a row on the bottom ticker of MSNBC, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Solana, uh, Litecoin. They were all up there with the little green triangle going up or the red triangle going down, just going scrolling across the bottom of the screen. And I was just thinking to myself while this person was thinking that they were talking to me. I was like, uh, OK, so crypto obviously has value to a lot of people. Because nobody is taking the time to make it a daily part of everybody's conversation if it doesn't have value. So there's some stuff going on in crypto right now that we probably can't even fathom. That, But it's got to be on the front of somebody's radar if it's ticker, if it's on the bottom of Fox Business and MSNBC and all these other shows. I mean, that's it. I just want to make a statement there. Just babble. Yeah. Finance, man. What does it mean that? that Talked about on hashing out stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does it mean that uh, that Coinbase is the trading partner of BlackRock? <laughs> uh, our robot overlords are getting one step closer. That's what it means. <laughs> well, I take it as. Oh, that's but yeah, one. what does that mean exactly? Uh, I'll try to read the article real quick. Because like, what like BlackRock manages like everybody's for everything. Yeah, like BlackRock owns everything. everything. Yeah, <laughs> like what are they like? Assets under management is like nine trillion, something like that. It's a lot. I thought it was twenty-one. No, really? Could be. I know. I think it's double ten, digits. Ten yeah. trillion. So that means that, like, if they want to invest in crypto, they're using Coinbase as the vehicle to do that. Correct? Is that what that means in terms of trading partner? I don't know. I have no idea. Speculation station, let's do it. Uh, I can read a little bit of the article if you guys are down. Over the past few years, Coinbase has played a central role in developing and strengthening crypto markets as the safest, most trusted, blah, 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 blah. Uh, built for institutions, Coinbase, <laughs> sorry, anyone listening? Uh, built for institutions, Coinbase Prime integrates advanced agency trading, uh, blah, blah, blah. Here's a quote. Our institutional clients are increasingly interested in gaining exposure to digital asset markets and are focused on how to efficiently manage the operational life cycle of those assets. Hmm. Huh. BlackRock is trying to be a whale. And they said, right? They said the comments here. I said, they ain't trying. They're doing it. Yeah. So um, I read a little bit of another article from Coindesk. That one was from Coinbase's blog. Uh, Coindesk. which can't be considered an article, I guess. It's a blog post. But Coinbase uh, said that a lot of people showed them because I think it's just the liquidity, right? They're looking for liquidity. And meme coin traders are leading the liquidity in crypto right now, which people are like, ooh, couch coin? Yeah, I'm going to trade that for cheese well, coin. The way I, the way I imagine the backroom conversation happening with, with BlackRock wanting to get into crypto and then finding the appropriate vehicles to do so coinbase has the most regulatory compliance i'd say so like there's compatibility and and they, they, there's they for sure have a very large section of people who do risk assessment within blackrock and they have mm-hmm. frameworks in which they need to comply to in order to actually participate in something i would imagine coinbase uh if it's not them crack in the united states coinbase. Complies to these things the most also and then so once they figure out the vehicle they can do this with and they look at the market of crypto my guess is that they're like we can manipulate this thing for a very small percentage of our portfolio to make really good returns 
why don't we just do that because there's no regulation associated to manipulating these things yet? Yeah. Like, but tell like, me how that's wrong. They got slapped with a $12 million fine in the past, I believe, or maybe a $2 million. Mm. And Robin Hood got that $30 million fine for not having... Um, Who did? Coinbase? Well, Robin Hood. Those, those fines so, are... So Coinbase have, has had, I think, at least two. Oh, but, who cares? Uh, what does BlackRock care? Yeah, it's like it's like nothing to them. So those fines are operational costs, Jesse. Those fines are not even right operational off. costs. Those are direct <laughs> yeah. costs. They're just like, oh, yeah. twelve million dollar fine. That's a lot less than we budgeted in for. Cool. Keep That's it so interesting. Moving. How we like, made three hundred million. So cool. <laughs> it's it's so interesting how like large organizations play by different rules than like an individual person. Like an individual person can't. They don't have the money to to pay those fines. You know, the fines would. Yeah, but we still do that, that, right? Like we still like make risk risk assessments and do things based on that risk. Like I still speed knowing that I can get fined a hundred bucks. And when it happens, I mean, I'm like, I ah, guess- you got me. All right, whatever. Or like I still do things with like credit and handle the interest payments because the amount of money I make or the value I get from using credit is more than the interest payment. Mm-hmm. I, people still take out loans because they can make more money, hopefully, based on the risk yeah. assessment from the loan than the interest payment of that loan. Like it's the same thing. It's just on the a much, much, much larger scale that is large enough to manipulate the market in which they're participating in. Me doing whatever the bullshit I'm doing isn't rocking any boat whatsoever. No one gives a shit if I make a thousand X on anything because the actual numbers are so small compared to the amount of money participating in that market. If you're something as big as BlackRock, you own the whole market. So you need to be really, really, really careful on how you move such if you want to come out on top, because if you, if you do something wrong, you cripple the whole market and then you don't have, you can't get out. I watched something uh, on, on the topic of mechanism design and one of the social behaviors being panic buying and how to manipulate that. So like if you're a large whale and let's say like right now, everything looks pretty, pretty uh, decimated, frothy. right? Everything, oh, everything frothy, looks man. to be <laughs> frothy. <laughs> well, so, so what I mean is like from all time highs where we, we were at some point down like 80 to mm. 90% mm-hmm. across most tokens, right? So if, if I'm BlackRock and I have like, one percent of my ten trillion dollar portfolio is what a hundred billion. If I inject that into one token, right? You How much panic buy scenario? You said one billion. Yeah, one hundred billion. Oh well, you can't yeah. inject that to one token. Like, what tokens have a hundred billion on them? Other than like I don't know Bitcoin right. and Ethereum. Okay, okay, so 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 something even less than than that. Um, that's what I mean. Like that's, that's what I, I mean by like, side, right? Market. That's, yeah. that, and so like that's what I There's mean a by that. Right? There is. And but like you're getting to my point. It, you've just iterated, reiterated my point, and that the amount of money that they have at their disposal to do these types of things that's minuscule compared to their entire portfolio is massive to the entire cryptocurrency mar- like economy. But what I'm saying is like they they will never sell. Right, they are the diamond hands. So, like, they whatever know. they buy, up, they would. They have, um, they have, they, like, they have exit strategies. BlackRock has an exit strategy. They're not buying things they? and holding, without a doubt. They're finance people. They're not like idealistic Bitcoin folks who are like, I'm doing this because fuck the banks. Like, they're here, like, they're there to make money. The you whole, said the, one more the goal. <laughs> well, the like, point how BlackRock is to make more money and then have yeah. and then assert influence. So like um, I guess I'm I'm talking to Fuck mostly the their banks. strategy Fuck the banks. residential, <laughs> like buying up residential uh, developments. Do they do they flip those, or do they just sit on those? I thought they sat on those. Right, well, they, they sit on them until they sit on well, them until they're flippable. That their flipping margins may be larger than the averages because they can sustain them. Whereas people have to like depending upon your timeline of investment that changes your risk assessment on what you, what you're capable of sustaining. 
So if, if you have a very strong confidence that a market will move in a particular direction, but not until like five years or 10 years, depending upon whatever this thing is, you invest a certain amount and have enough to weather a volatile market during the course of getting there, right? And with crypto, it has to be a volatile market. But like think about housing, right? So you just like invested a shitload in housing right now because you think it's in, in 20 years, it's going to blow up. Well, it's going to crash before that. So you need to be able to sustain that. Yeah, that's uh, one of the things that- uh, Or you wait, or you or you induce the crash, then you buy it up. Yes, if we're talking about investing, I did read Warren Buffett's book, the, the, the very popular one. Um, and- It's on Ken, huh? Um, <laughs> no, he said that any- <laughs> Huh? You know, the one, the one, the Uh, popular. It's not the, I think it's the intelligent investor, but I also don't think that that's him. There's two books. One's like Ray Dalio's, one's his. I think the one where he, the one where I think this is the, well, he outlined like if you're wanting to get a return on your investment in less than five years, that's not an investment. You're speculating. If you want to return, you're, you need to bucket your investments into like five year increments, five, 10, 15 years. Right. Because in those years, that's when you're going to get monumental return on your investment. And you've got to be able to, like Corey said, you've got to be able to stomach the downturns if you think it's a good investment. Right. You got to stomach the downturns. Anything under five years is just speculation. Right. Which I absolutely agreed with. Right? So do we think that going back to the original prompt, do we think that Coinbase becoming a trading partner of BlackRock means that they're going to use Coinbase to do OTC trades into shit coins? Yes, I think so. No, I think they're going to influence the entire crypto industry through forcing Coinbase to implement certain features that they need or work on certain types of compliance issues or regulatory issues or whatever that they need in order to participate at the level they want to that pushes the industry in a direction that's not that's 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 for BlackRock and people like BlackRock, not for people like me. What is yeah. Aladdin? That it's I a cartoon know. that came out of Disney. No, no, no. A while ago. Uh, oh no! Starring a guy that sounds like Matthew Broderick. So get this. So this is what Aladdin is. This is actually was a post by Colin. That Colin. It was a little bit uh, dramatic, and it was saying that the Colin? Aladdin. It was saying the Aladdin. <laughs> software is eating the planet's value right that's blackrock made this automated this ai controlled uh trading software called aladdin and it's it's gotten that's why i threw out that number because it was from that video saying aladdin owns x amount of minute billions but the value that it affects is this amount per trillion sorry trillions but it affects this many trillions right so i was like what so right now on Coinbase's blog, it says Queen, that yes. if, if you're interested in working with this partnership, you can email Aladdin partnership at coinbase.com. And that's how. So I think they're going to try to plug in that Oof. AI into crypto trading. Oof. So what's interesting is that before this wave and probably from here on out, um, it was always, Bitcoin was always seen as this un, like relatively speaking, uncorrelated asset in a regular investment portfolio. Meaning that if, if like the cryptocurrency, if like the traditional market went down, like stock market went down, it wouldn't, the like effect. Bitcoin wouldn't necessarily follow it. Right. So they were uncorrelated in, in that, in that sense. So it was a hedging strategy for a lot of people to put Bitcoin and similar assets into their portfolio so that in the event that one goes down, the others don't. But as situations like this come up and you have more finance people and large and large players and influence coming in and then applying their standard investment strategies across the board, you're losing that uncorrelated asset property that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies have. It's becoming more looking more and more like traditional financial investments because the largest players that manipulate the market and dictate trends are using the same types of strategies across the board. And so like the idealistic hodler doesn't have nearly as much influence because 
the amount of money that they represent is so much smaller compared to traditional finance money and their investment strategies. So like, mm -hmm. I don't know if we're ever going to get back to cryptocurrency being an uncorrelated asset because of that influence. Yeah. As soon as it gets gobbled, it's now in the bucket with everything else. And Raju, I feel like you'd be the perfect member of the Migos. You've got such great ad libs coming out of left field right here. They have to flip because they don't want another 08. I really would love to imagine that being said by the Migos. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, it's it's. I'm not going to say it's not frightening because there's no way all you guys out here who think you're good traders are going to out-trade Black Rocks a lot. That's not going to happen. Let me tell you something. I can do it. I'll do it in my backyard. Yeah, it's easy, bro. Just Look at the, all, like a couple Python scripts, you know. No, what you really need to do is take the number pi. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know what you're doing here. <laughs> good, good throwback. If anyone... <laughs> Anyone who's listening or will listen to this can identify that callback to what D is referring to, then one, you are an OG TV, TVP listener, and I will give you 50 bucks and whatever cryptocurrency you like if you can identify that one. Mm -hmm. Even the really shady cryptos that put Corey's wallets at risk. Mm, give you 50 that's bucks not, on that one. No, yeah. we're not doing that. And Lampcoin. Okay, uh, I have to get it through Uniswap. <laughs> it's just narrowing it down. It's got to be. No, a pretty, it's gonna, a pretty broad spectrum. Um, you got to get it off of the Cripsy exchange. Oh, God. I think my like alien coin's still on there. Does that even, it doesn't even exist anymore. Some of the shady stuff that I've done was like, oh, man. When Did you go BTC, back in time? Did you go back in time and talk about our early mining days? When BTC was, was the Jesse. exchange, when I was like, so I'm sending my Bitcoin to this Russian exchange, and everybody's like, yeah, that's pretty much what everybody's doing. Bro, I sent the money. I, I mailed a money order once <laughs> for Bitcoin. BTC. Yeah, for Bitcoin. It was just some random place in Japan, and it worked. They just watched the website. It's like, oh, you have Bitcoin now. It's like, oh, they did it. Awesome. <laughs> it's Dude, nice. talk about pirate level risk. You know, and I think about this all the time lately is that pirates eventually, how do, how do I put this? Because I was thinking about this in the shower. I don't have my bidet hooked up yet. But like, think about all of these. Use the, your shower head. In heaven? <laughs> in heaven? Shower, I get on a handstand in the shower. <laughs> this bidet is amazing. Oh, man, I'm going to put it on pressure mode. Uh Massage mode. Anyways, um, what was I talking about? So, pirates. They have great pluses and terrible minuses. The pluses are pirates are willing to go learn and do things that no one else is. Right? The negatives are you pretty much got to play by their rules. Because they're going, doing, and learning things that no one else is. And then eventually... Some of the piracy bleeds its way into ma into mainstream as stuff that we use. For example, there's probably like 50 knots that no naval officer knew until they started hanging around with pirates a little more. They're like, hey, pirates, you guys do the dirty stuff. We're going to take this government money, pay you to go do the dirty stuff and come back. And then in those conversations, they're like, yeah, we use this kind of knot for that kind of wave and this kind of knot for those kinds of winds. And they're like, oh, that's pretty cool. We got that down. Took that back to my Navy guys and we got new stuff. And so I feel like crypto is a lot of that. Like it's people like Corey and myself that are willing to send money orders across overseas, just figure, hope that it works. And then when it works, we're like, oh, I figured it out. Right. And this is how you do it. And then slowly somebody gets got and you learn a little bit more and stuff starts like leaking its way from piracy into mainstream. Like we've gone from nap music wise, we've gone from Napster, which was just total piracy. To now there's Spotify, which, I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome if you're not a musician. I'm not going to lie to you. If, I mean, Spotify has nothing to do with Napster. Well, the guy that made Napster owned Spotify and found Did he Spotify. Really? Yes. Sean. I don't think that's true. Sean whatever. Look it up. Sean Harper or Google Parker? that. Sean Google Parker. That. The Sean Parker, Napster dude, 
is responsible for Spotify. No way. Google. I want to sit back here because this feels like another uh, guilty feet have got no rhythm moment. <laughs> That's a reasonable thought, by the way. <laughs> uh, Parker sent an email to Spotify's founder, Daniel Eck. The pair invested. Let's see. There's something here. There's something here. This is some... I'm kind of right there. I'm in there. Spotify. While working at Founders Fund, Parker had been looking to invest in a company that could further Napster's music sharing missions legally. 2009, the French had him Spotify, sweetest music streaming service, and Parker sent an email to Spotify's founder, Daniel Eck. The pair traded emails. And in 2010, Parker invested $15 million in Spotify. Yeah, he bought a 5% stake in a board seat. On, he's, he's on a board seat. Million. Okay. Yeah. So no, he didn't co-found. He didn't found it. He just uh, bought a seat. He Facebooked it. He Facebooked it. Yeah. Um. So, Forget is anybody Facebook. is anybody clocking how much Jesse has shrunk during this? Slowly but surely, we're gonna see top of forehead. So comfortable right now. You don't even know. move your camera, bro. Like move your camera to where you're comfortable. <laughs> this shit is not hard. <laughs> there, there we go. <laughs> See, like, you don't need know. to stand because, up because like because like you, you don't know like maybe a few minutes from now like i may be even more comfortable like you know if you're there. if you're <laughs> that down there then you've got problems man get comfortable put your camera there um, exciting. so what was i gonna say i'm, I'm saying too much i feel like i've talked a lot this episode i'm gonna ease off ease off the vocal cords talking about black rock oh, that's enough black rock that's enough black rock Talk about Vanguard. They're like the second biggest. When's the last time you guys have stumbled into r slash Bitcoin? Never. I unsubscribed to that a long time ago. There's a fail. There's no information coming from that subreddit. Like I'd say pure... all of Reddit, all of cryptocurrency inside of Reddit is garbage as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's like pure... it used to be the only source of information. Like when we started this podcast, we basically just recapped Reddit. And so like Evan Van Ness who does we can ethereum was literally a curated reddit post and it was just it's like this is what happened to reddit over the past week that you don't have to go and sort through and read i'm doing it for you that then turned into what it is today mm -hmm. and and like now there might be some stuff in reddit but it's so drowned out by a bunch of garbage that i can't pay, I, I just unsubscribe to it it's like it is i don't want to spend my time in reddit there it's pure propaganda. Pure. Like it's like Or just like the same dumb questions and ignorance that was there in the early days, or not, if not worse. So like if you were like R slash cryptocurrency, it's like people who don't know how to Google or read anything, asking questions. Or like saying that like, you know, something's about to moon or the I'm market's in, about to turn around. I'm in no cryptocurrency subreddits. And my life is better for that. Yeah. I am in a lot of cryptocurrency Discord servers, and my life is not better because of that. That's what it's moved to, right? It's like, <clears throat> and that's been a general shift in, I'd say, being an internet citizen or, a, I don't know, on the bleeding edge of being an internet citizen is how you spend your time in communities. So like it used to be like Reddit was the place you go to like hang out with a community of people who are thinking about things. Now that's Discord or Telegram. It'll move again, yeah. It'll move, move again. again. Hopefully, hopefully to status if we ever get to publishing thing anything. But like that, but the and, like, and Slack too. Slack was the first, I think, wholesale migration of communities. <clears throat> um, and so you end up with this concept of contextual community conversations and a bunch of them. So like, I know where to go to talk about this with these people. Whereas beforehand, it was always like, I go to this place and I try and find those people to talk to them. Like this, like all of the different contexts were mixed into a single subreddit in Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. Now there's a bunch of different contexts that people go to that are around the same topic, but or contextualized or like with a group, group of people that you align with. And that is, it's interesting to me from like an information sharing perspective 
like how things go viral or how like people participate on the internet and like the, like the connection graph of all of that is it's drastically different. Whereas beforehand, like you went to one place, they captured all the data and you were subject to more things than what you wanted to be to have the conversations you wanted to have. Now it's more isolated. I call it more decentralized in a way where mm -hmm. I go to a bunch of different servers with different people in them. And when I say something, it's only broadcast to those people. And so you have much more fine grain resolution if you have access to those things and you don't have to keep track of everything or be subjugated to it or as much stuff to be subjugated to it. But then it's, it's like my attention is also fractured in a way I have to keep track of 50 to 60 different servers to keep to like have the conversations i'd like to have depending on what i'm interested in so like yeah. how i spend my time and my attention is way more complicated than it used to be you can't do that i don't think i don't think it's physically possible i think you're i think your brain becomes too fractured in code switching to be in that many communities at once i feel That's like it's interesting gotta... though right it's like i'm having it's like a it's like a it's, it's this weird juxtaposition where I have higher quality conversations about the things that I want to keep track of in my life, but I have worse notification and like context switching fatigue by being inundated with con like in notifications from everything that I'm keeping track of and managing a bunch of different applications and then switching my brain to thinking about talking to different people at a given time, all the time, all day, 24 seven. That's why I like the Taylor, the Taylor Moynihan approach. I'm going to give you a shout out, Taylor, who takes the time to create curated word lists, keyword lists for every server that she's in so okay. that she well, knows that, she can get spam. <laughs> she <laughs> only yeah. is talked to or needs to be in a conversation when she can add value to it. That right there is some fucking wizardry that everyone has the ability to do, but she's the only person I've seen actually do it. Like we could be talking about something random and you know when it's triggered her keyword base because she hops in and she adds like a sentence that's like, oh, Taylor's always on time. Jeez, she's awesome. She's everywhere. She's everywhere, how? And yeah, I guarantee like that came from having a mental breakdown trying to keep track of so many things yeah. on. it gets to you gotta have the dam has to break before you build it back better like that's kind of like that's kind of like how it, it goes down and i got to a point which is actually detrimental in this industry where i turn stuff i turn telegram off turn discord off oh, we know we know i i just turn them off it's like i was like bro like this is so much messages i can't i can't have one giant so what does that look like for like crypto and because like the what i i'd say i still believe this but i think that what's next is adding micro economies to these communities is basically allowing each of these individual communities to have their own economy associated with them and that's facilitated through crypto digital assets blockchains right but you're gonna have the same effects where you have this spreading out of your attention even amongst the assets associated with these communities right it's like your wallet well, has 40,000 assets in it now because i'm in so many communities like is it is it we're just stuck because we grew up with the internet that we thought we could understand and like fully but that's impossible and so like our kids are going to be like no 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 dad you don't you subscribe to five things that's the most you can do I think it's very, that's God's good question. I got a lot of thoughts, but I've already been talking a lot. I want to hear Jesse respond first. No, Jesse's going to stare at the screen. Yeah, I, I have no idea what you were saying. <laughs> what were you <laughs> paying attention? He's not even listening. He's just staring at the screen and his, I'm, his, his I'm responding maroon to, self. I'm responding to uh, Christina. She's asking me about the dedication ceremony stuff that's going on later this afternoon. He's, okay. not, he's just here. He's here as a pretty face. Stare at Jesse. Listen, listen, listen to us. All right. Give me a quick recap and I'll, I'll add my thoughts. <laughs> nope. It's over. It's past. It's gone. All right. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm also carrying on a conversation with Alicia, you know, in private chat about. You, know, you could stop that and be on the show we're on. 
well, I mean, like I, I'm, I'm doing multiple things. I'm multitasking. Just need a quick recap. If you're still, and here's an example of what I'm talking about. Here's an example of what we're talking about. Beautiful. So, okay, I, 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 I remember you were talking about how, when you were younger, you thought you could understand like something about like what the internet is capable of, or some to that extent. Uh, I don't know if I even think that was ever possible. Like it was, it, it I know, but like. I didn't have this concept of being reachable. Like I say, for like let's talk about like early AOL days, right? Okay. AIM, I was on there. There was no concept of someone being able to reach me 24-7 for every single community that I'm in. I feel it like was, this it was is more I'm logging problem. in and I'm doing something uh-huh. with my time as I'm logged in on this yeah. one machine. Whereas now, like I have access to all of these communities from every device that I'm on anywhere in the world. Oh, okay. And, that, and so like, okay. like this concept of I can contextualize and manage access to the, the world mm-hmm. easily and still have some semblance of like my physical containment space. Right. I'm, I, I, I interact <laughs> with the real world and have those limitations. Those are gone now. And I still have this expectation that I can manage all of it on a 24 seven basis. Whereas I think my kids are going to be like, nah, dad, you can't do that. You got to stay local. So, so remember, remember when we had that conversation on the way to the grocery store a long time ago and I, and you were asking me like, you know, why, why do you have so many different aliases online? Like, does it serve a purpose? And I kind of told you it contextualizes, uh, my, my existence in that one area that specific area whether it has to do with gaming or education or you know whatever it just makes it easier for me to context switch because we're given alpha right now by the way guys so keep going yeah i mean i i I don't think it's difficult to context switch uh there is a there is a no it's not it's difficult to do it so many times a day it can only have like i remember i used to listen to uh dave asprey he's the progenitor of bulletproof coffee and like the yeah. quantitative self and he's a yeah. hack he's a he's dumb as shit but like i was i bought into him a lot <laughs> early on um and he had this concept that i still have I think has some level of merit which is like you have a finite amount of decisions you can make in a single day sure yeah and the way we've built the internet and the way that I, I interact with it, and I know many, many people, other, many others interact with it, at least especially in like the crypto community, yeah. are just depleting that. And if you get any level of success in that in these communities, you just drastically amplify the amount of things you participate in and then quick, even more quickly deplete that thing. That's why burnout is so bad across the industry. Well, I, I, like, you know, the the... Uh, Sam's son, right? That kid. I think there's a, yeah. there's a reason why he probably doesn't mix his real life, you know. Um, I think that's a security, security. issue. <laughs> Don't you think it's a little bit of both? It's like it, it probably makes it easier for him to kind of switch. Maybe. I mean, like, you can turn it off. Like, you ain't worried about having conversations in real life about this stuff all the time. Or yeah. like, I think Andy that... says, uh, context switching is fine unless you need a deep, deep concentration. So that's like the. Uh, yeah, the, I agree with that. that. The deep work, we wrote deep work. I think that, I think what we're finding, what we're gonna find is if, and by the way, the reason I said this is alpha is because the obvious, in my eyes, next play of crypto is gonna be this this, this community valuing, community token, social token, social tokenization, all that stuff. It seems very ethereal now, but it does make sense. It's like a replaying of like. Like I was saying a few days ago, like you go to the town smith when you need some smithing done. How do you know? Because he's going to have it written all over stuff. There's going to be badges of smithing approval all over his shit. He's going to be wearing different clothes. He's going to be, if you look at his house, right next to his house is going to be a shack with his smithing emblem on it and proof that he's the best smith in town. And you go there. You go to that. That's the smithing group if you need something done. I think the internet is going to have a way that pseudonymously show what you're really good at. And it's going to propagate more than just in your locality. 
it's going to propagate across the internet of what you're good at. And the more time you spend in those communities, the more social uh, merit that you have in those communities, it's going to show, right? It's going to show because of the way your wallet is structured and the what kind of tokens you have in it. And you can only have those tokens by being a participatory in those communities or gaining knowledge in what those communities like to talk about. I think that assuming is, they can't be bought, assuming they can't be bought. Right. Um, but even if they can be bought, what's the value of that badge and how did you get that value? How did you, I think it just, it opens up a whole new avenue to be able to uh, add value to social communities online. Cause you know, obviously my wall wouldn't be, I can't even have <laughs> that much communication. So my wall wouldn't even be that deep. I'd be like, God damn, y'all talk too much. I'm out. Right. But like, <laughs> but it's like, if you spend, so for example, the same way in life where like, I think engineers, engineers wear rings on their pinky. Uh, am I right about that? Just you're an engineer. And they're like a engineers. They wear this you, like ring. you can get like a PE ring. I mean, yeah. sometimes sometimes they also like wear their undergrad ring because I don't know people do that. People are weird like that. No, but I know you know, <laughs> I dated a girl. Rap. I dated a girl. She was an engineer. She wore this ring on her pinky. I was like, "What well, is this for?" She's like, "Oh, it shows that I'm an engineer." Oh, okay. Um, if it was a promise ring, we would have had some words, Jesse. You would have been like, "Promise to who? What the you don't make promises." Yeah. Um. <laughs> And she was like, oh, it's because I was a fundamental engineer and thing. And I was in this little fraternity for engineers. And that's what we do. Does it sound very fundamental? Right. And so, I don't know. I was, I was like, oh, okay. So it's like an identifier. If you're in a group of professionals, they're like, oh, y'all are the ones. Yeah, they wear the swag, engineers. right? It's, yeah. you, they wear the swag of the, of the community. And that becomes noticeable. Uh, what was I going to say just a second ago? Um, that was a part of that was a extension of this and I forgot. You know what okay, Christian would say? Done. Wasn't important if you forgot it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Christian. It's actually you know, it's all over the place. You know, uh, um, I got the stickers uh, from uh, from the ETH Barcelona yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. and I put them on my phone. And when I lost my phone at the gym because I left it in some equipment, and I went to the uh, patron at the front uh, to pick up my phone. Uh, he was really friendly and I was just like very friendly back. And I was just like, I don't know. Like the stickers are pretty like edgy, you know, you think the stickers had to do with friendliness? No, I just don't know. It's just, I don't know what I expected. I don't know what the connection was there. Do you no, think I he's into the same stuff, same stuff that you're into? I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. It was just, it was just a random thought. I was just like looking at my phone. <laughs> that have you seen the stickers? No, uh, do you... no, I haven't. I haven't. You want to? Do you want to see them? Yeah, hang, hold them up here. Sorry, radio. You don't get to see this <clears> thing. <throat> oh yeah. Do I have those? I got those somewhere. It's like you turned that. your you turned your phone into how what people turn the back of their cars into, right? <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool. That's much but... more understandable than I just, I can't, I don't, I'm not going to say I can't stand it, but it's a pet peeve of mine when people slap bumper stickers all over the back of their car. I know. I'm like, what? You don't care about that stuff that much. Get out of here. Like, all right. Coexist. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. Like dog mom. You need to put that on your car. I'm pretty sure we'd know that you like dogs when we saw you with your dog. I don't, think, I don't think you need to put them in the car. But anyways, um, did, so did you spark up a conversation with this patron, or you just no? I was just I was just surprised that like uh, I didn't get like a like a weird look, you know, like um, oh, for, you thought for, that because of the stickers you're gonna get some type of like well, here you go, weirdo. Yeah, yeah. But but no, there wasn't yeah, nobody's. That sort of well, he didn't say it to your care. face. He's not gonna say. It Maybe to he was face. thinking it. Maybe. Yeah. A lot of people don't tell you what they're thinking. That's true. You hang, out with us too much. <laughs> you hang out with us too much. We just tell you exactly what we're thinking. <laughs> he took a he took a he took a picture of your phone and sent it to his friends. That's what he did. Like, look yeah. at this guy. Look at this guy. Good at TikTok out of it. Interesting. Um so here's other news. The Bitcoin hash rate distribution 
is back down to reasonable. I remember the unknown amount was so fucking high like three weeks ago when I was like, what is going on? And then I, my like my conspiracy theory wheel started turning. I was like, what if China didn't turn it off but told everyone they turned it off? <laughs> What's going on? I was like, the unknown pool is so large. What? China. It's always anything. Anything is questionable in my life. I look directly at China. That's I think I've been trained since a young age. Right, we're like we're history. like the the Cold War era Americans towards Russia. Mm. <laughs> like yeah. all bad people are. I mean, I guess we still are kind of still looking at Russia that way. But like, yeah, no, this Russia stuff. All is movies just... where like all the bad guys are Russian, and like it's, it was it's general propaganda and like sentiment across Americans was like bad, no matter what. Mm -hmm. That's yep. what China is today. Also, right. it is to me, man. I think this Russia stuff is this is the boomer shit. Boomers are still trying to grasp on to that last straw relevance. Do your thing, yeah, Russia, Ukraine, yeah. but China to me is like, dude, you worry about China? To, I'm not trying to get roundhouse yeah, in the be. back of my neck, bro. China's got a lot going on. When was man. Tiananmen Square? Was that in the 90s, early 90s? Good question. Earlier than that, I thought. Why are you trying it, to embarrass all 80s? of us by not knowing common facts? Get out of here. 80s. And then square. 1989 is when it was. I knew that. Massacre. Did you look that up? I didn't know that. Up. I knew that off the top of my head. You're not. You're a goddamn liar. I know. I'm seeing like a lot of news stories about like the tanks in the street. It was 1989, wasn't it? Amisha says 89. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure it was June 5th, 1989. I think that's a, that's a, key, that's a key indicator of let's wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about the end of square. We're going to get <laughs> canceled somehow all right let's let's wrap this bad boy up uh we're two episodes from episode 400 on the bitcoin podcast it's been a good long run as you can tell we uh you know bitcoin had its run and bitcoin's doing great things it's it's inching closer to whatever it wants to be in the world um and uh there's just i mean technologically wise the the lightning network is kind of cool um but as far as the things that we like to discuss, which are adoption, uh, tech centric things, um, they just can't take place on a show called the Bitcoin podcast anymore. It doesn't doesn't feel like it aligns. So uh, if you want to listen to all our oldies but goodies, go to the Bitcoin podcast dot com and go to the archives there. And you will see episodes of me on ramping people. You'll see the early episodes of hashing it out. You will see. Um, how oh, to nice. how to use natural numbers as market indicators mm -hmm. jesus christ sorry not natural numbers uh transcendental numbers um what else you'll see all the oldies but goodies and you'll find a lot of the stuff that we were talking to and the people we were interviewing which is damn near everyone who's relevant in the space um there's a lot of good stuff there's a lot of good gold in them their hills uh, we know a lot of you, at least thousands of you a week, are listening to the old stuff. So keep it up. Keep that stuff going. Share it with your friends. Um, Laugh at the dumb and, stuff we say and the smart stuff we say. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and subscribe to Hashing yeah. It Out. So the Hashing It Out podcast is the podcast we're all transitioning to. Um, and we're going to have several different show types on Hashing It Out as well. Uh, you will see Flash Hash. <laughs> That's a good one. You can raise the roof, Jesse. It's an old 1980, 1998 thing. <laughs> you know about that. You know none about that. I know that, nothing about that. I wasn't born then. Oh, my God. That was... Just, wait, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> you were born in 1998, weren't you? How, how no, is, yes. no, I wasn't. I wasn't born then. Yes, he is. Keep going. Stop, Jesse. You're <laughs> fucking with me. You're fucking with me. All right. <laughs> Sorry. You broke my brain for a second. Uh... Flash Ash, there's the Hashing It Out show, which is going to be one where uh, we're making no qualms. If if you're a beginner in crypto, it's probably not for you. But if you want it's, to... It's not. It's just not for you. There's no problem involved. If you want to be advanced, or at least feel like you are and tell your friends that you are, <laughs> you can listen to Hashing It Out because we're going to be getting some things that you probably, you know, don't know. I'll just put it like that. I'll just put it straight to you. And then there's also going to be Flash Hash, which is basically uh, us just having lightning rounds around different topics. And then also a show um, 
that Christian doesn't know she's going to work with. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. There we go. Good ideas for that one. Uh, but anywho. Uh, personals, bro. Can, yeah. Personals. Personals also is a type of show coming out of Hashing It Out where we invite someone in the space that we really just want to talk to you, uh, rack their brain on certain things going on in crypto. And it's basically the continuation of what Hashing Out has been in the past, mm -hmm. whereas a lot of the other material is going to be more heavily produced and focused on a specific topic. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. I want to do, I'm only going to have the opportunity to do this like two more times. So shout out to old long neck, wide smile, Zoe Saldana. Um, I'll be in the front row for uh, avatars two and three. And, you know, you could be a 10 foot blue alien with dense bones. I'm still... <laughs> trying to holla, 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 you know? Sorry, no disrespect. Anyways, play the outro. Which one of these? Yeah. <laughs>